Good evening, everyone. Welcome to episode one of Blue Connections 2020. My name is Donna Ozarko, and I am the manager of officials and publications for Softball Canada. And I'm Jeff Whipple, national director of umpires for Softball Canada. We're so excited you're able to join us for this new venture. We're living in a really unique age and moment in history. We've all been looking for some ways to move forward with the sport we all love. The Officiating Development Committee has decided to start a new venture, Blue Connections 2020. Sometimes out of crisis comes opportunity. We think the challenge of COVID-19 has opened the door for us to enhance umpire learning across the country. This new webinar series is designed to bring umpires together to learn from some of our country's leading officials. The sessions will focus on some basics and will reference best practices on mechanics, game management, and fitness from both the WBSC and Softball Canada. Tonight, we're pleased to present the first episode in this series as two of Canada's leading officials talk about a crucial game management topic, how and when umpires should conference. Just a reminder that all sessions will be recorded and available on our Softball Canada YouTube uh, umpire YouTube channel and if you have questions for our presenters during this evening you can leave them in the chat section and we'll pass the questions on to Chris and Frankie at the end. Chris Hartley reconnected with softball as an official uh, after several years focusing on baseball. Chris has attended several uh, eight Canadian championships receiving his level five in 2019 and is currently in the candidate pool for WBSC certification. Chris is a multi-sport official and has represented Hockey, Hockey Canada and Baseball Canada at the national and international level. He's also an elementary teacher and a college volleyball assistant coach. Frankie Billingsley is one of Canada's leading international officials. Since receiving her WBSC certification in 2013, she has represented Canada at several international competitions, including the 2016 and the 2018 Women's World Cups and the 2019 Women or Olympic Qualifier. Next year, Frankie will be one of two Canadian umpires who will take to the field at the Olympic Games in Tokyo. Frankie is pursuing a doctorate at the University of Western Ontario. Welcome to you both, and thanks for taking the time to share your expertise as we explore when umpires need to chat, best practices around conferencing. Thank you for those kind introductions. So welcome everybody. Uh, Chris and I are very excited to welcome people from our home province of Alberta, across the country of this great nation of ours, and also welcoming some friends all around the world who have reached out over the last few days to say that they were going to be attending. So a warm welcome to each and every one of you. Um, just a little note, if you happen to see Chris and I looking off to the side or, or not exactly making eye contact with the webcam, it's because we're, we're uh, looking at our notes. So, uh, don't be distracted by that, but welcome, and I hope that you enjoy. So to, here's our agenda for tonight's presentation. Uh, we're going to start off with a little bit of stuff related to the context and rationale as to why we chose this topic. Uh, and then we'll look a little bit more into the being prepared or pre-game side of um, officiating and how it will relate to uh, conferencing. We'll give you some tips and a guide to conferencing. Uh, when to and when not to run a conference, how to avoid conferencing, so some tips and strategies on avoiding the need to conference. We'll summarize it all up. Uh, this should take about 25 minutes or so, uh, and then we'll have a question and answer period at the end. So feel free to put your questions uh, in the uh, chat box like Jeff mentioned. So if I were sitting in the audience, I would be wondering, how did Chris and Frankie arrive at the decision to do a webinar on conferencing? Well, I will share that with you. Chris and I were originally planning on presenting 
this presentation to the Alberta Softball Umpires Association for the 2020 season. And this idea came about from the observations that our evaluators in the province had observed and also Canadian championship evaluations that were coming back for our officials who had traveled. And really there, we were noticing a tendency for officials to conference either too often or at inappropriate times during a game. So that's sort of where, where this came from. And then uh, interestingly enough, when I was in New Zealand in February for the U18 men's world championship, it actually occurred to me while I was there that this is something that perhaps we don't talk about at all levels frequently enough because it, it was something that um, there were numerous incidents in New Zealand where we were conferencing sometimes well and sometimes maybe we didn't need to. So we thought this would be a perfect opportunity when Softball Canada was looking for people to present uh, to the country, we thought, you know what, why don't we do our presentation to the Canadian audience first? And then we we are planning on doing this for the Alberta group in the next few weeks. And this one will be longer because it will include video footage that goes along with every scenario that we will be talking about this evening. So aside from that context, there's a larger rationale that goes along with, with this. I think that um, when people are going to championships, they are evaluated on a number of different categories. We are evaluated on the way we manage a game, our presence on the diamond, our believability, our credibility, um, the integrity that we have as an official. And the bottom line is we wanna get, get the right call. Everything that we do on the diamond can either enhance or diminish our presence and the way that people perceive that we manage a game. And so that's sort of the larger rationale for why Chris and I chose to do this topic, because I think that conferencing is one of the areas that can definitely enhance the way that we look and our presence and the way we manage a game. And it can also, it can also diminish those, those capacities as well. So when we look at conferencing, it starts before the game. So from the very first clinic that you attended, your instructors typically talked or stressed the importance of showing up to your game a minimum of 30 minutes before game time, um, or you know at least enough time in it for you to be able to you know get ready mentally, physically, have that discussion with your partners, whether it be just a two umpire system or maybe a four or six umpire system, depending on what it might be. So we we talk about communicating and rotating. Uh, or rotations during our pregame conferences. We talk about how we're going to handle various situations like who has the tag ups when the ball is hit in this area or who has the catch no catch responsibility. Um, we also look at uh, the fly ball line drive coverage. But one thing that we need to really look at is the situations that might result in a potential conference or an opportunity where we don't need to conference. So one of those situations is when a batted ball hits the batter in the batter's box. Um, if I, I, when I'm running at my own pregame with my crew, I typically always bring that situation up because we as officials are able to discuss that before the game and determine that, you know, as a base umpire, if I see the ball go off the batter in the batter's box, a batted ball off the batter, I'm going to come up and call dead ball and kill the play if if I notice it. Um, if I'm on the flip side, if I'm the plate umpire and we've had that discussion, my base umpires, if they don't come up with the uh, dead ball mechanic to kill the play and a coach comes out and asks me as the plate umpire, hey, that ball went off my batter's foot. Can you ask for help? My response to that coach is, coach, no, I'm not gonna go and have a conference with my partners because we talked about that situation specifically before the game started. And if they would have seen it, they would have called dead ball and killed the play uh, if they would have seen it. So because they didn't use that mechanic, they obviously did not see it go off the batter's foot like you're suggesting it did. So some tips and strategies when we actually do have to conference um, is 
we when we come together, we want to make sure that we move to an area away from participants or make sure that they're away so they're not looking over our shoulder, listening in on our conversation. Um, so depending on where the situation occurs on the field, that might be between the pitcher's mound and first base. It might be out between pitcher's mound and shortstop. Again, depending on the scenario and the situation, we want to find an area that is fairly neutral and to keep the defending players and offensive players away so that we can have a conversation as a crew. When we're conversing, we want to make sure that we kind of cover our mouths with our hands and try to limit the amount of body language that we use that might tip off to the participants what's being said or what is occurring. Try not to use gestures like pointing or you know a head nod of yes or no, right? Just again, kind of cover your mouth and you know have a conversation there because the participants are looking for clues as to you know oh obviously that third base umpire in the four umpire system is the one taking charge and making all the comments he's the one that's going to change the ruling or not change the ruling um, so we want to try and eliminate that uh, perception um, so that when we come up with a ruling it's less obvious as to maybe who provided the information to make that final decision Talking about who runs the conference, it's the initiating umpire. The initiating umpire is the umpire that requests the conference. Um, too often, there's a tendency sometimes for a certain crew member to take charge or take over. And we really want to make sure that it's the umpire that's initiating the conference, the one that called the crew together, uh, is the one that takes charge and leads that discussion. And when leading that discussion, they want to use clear and concise questions. So if Frankie and I, if we we're working a two umpire game and I, we come together and I go to Frankie, Frankie, do you have the first baseman's foot pulled off the bag on that throw to first? Her answer should be a simple, concise answer of yes or no. Um, or maybe do you have the uh, ball being dropped on transfer or is it was did the fielder never have the ball securely at second base and she might say didn't have control or on the transfer simple concise ex explanations and uh, answers which will speed up the process so that it's not a huge delay in the game and then when we figure out what our final decision or final ruling is the person that communicates the ruling with the participants should be the umpire that initiated the conference we want that person to be the one to give the signal this you know the, the safe signal or the out signal or whatever it might be we want them to be the one because they're the ones that initiated the conference they're the ones that are ending it uh, in the very rare circumstance that a both coaches need to be pulled together to explain a situation that's when the plate umpire may be uh, tasked with the conversation because they're acting as the crew chief for that crew. So now we're gonna turn our attention to um, a few examples that we've put together where we feel that these are instances that when the crew decides to conference, it helps the credibility of the crew, which in turn leads to a higher level of believability amongst the participants. So the first one is fixing an obvious error. So uh, Chris mentioned the example of, let's say there's a runner on first base, there's a hit to the shortstop, the shortstop chooses to field the ball over to second, the second base umpire has an out, and then the ball is on the ground. In that instance, it, does the ball get on the ground because the fielder had never had any control or does the ball end up on the ground because they were in the motion of of in the transfer on they were going to throw um this is an instance where we think it's best for the crew to come together have a quick conversation and as chris said quick the second base umpire would lead the conversation um get the information from the partners and come out with the ruling you want to get the call right and it's helpful to have other people who have different views of the play and different perspectives to give you the information to get that correct 
The second instance where we think it's beneficial for the crew to come together is in the application or enforcement of a rule. So another example, we have a runner on first base, the batter runner bunts the ball, the first baseman plays the ball, and while they're attempting to tag the batter runner, the batter runner backs up. The plate umpire signals an out for the tag and runs back to their position. And in a two, three, or four umpire system, depending on where the umpires are located in a two umpire system, if the two if the if the base umpire is between second and third, they oftentimes have a better view of the batter runner backing up. And so it would be incumbent upon the base official to call time and conference because we want to be able to get the application and enforcement of rules correct. These are protestable issues and therefore as a crew we want to make sure we get them right. The final one that we've included as a yes you want to conference when this happens is in an instance where you have two different plays two different calls rather on the same play by two different umpires. So an example would be again we have a runner on first base the ball is hit to the second the second baseman and we have the first base umpire who calls interference and the second base umpire who calls obstruction. Two different calls, two different umpires. The best thing to do is to gather the crew, have a conversation, come out with a call. This exact same play happened in the Olympic Games in Greece and the way that the crew resolved that was to explain to the coaches that the umpire that was receiving the, the play was going to make the call. And so I would encourage you, as Chris has already said, the pregame is so important. That's something that I would encourage people to add to your pregame. When you do have collisions between the bases, that's something we talked about in New Zealand, that have a conversation in your pregame about who will be responsible for the call, or at least for the initial call. Um, so I thought that was really uh, helpful information. So we're going to turn our attention now to some examples of times when we don't want to conference. These would be instances where when we do conference, it perhaps hurts the crew and um, or just it's just unnecessary. So we'll turn our attention to some examples here. One of them Chris spoke about earlier, which is the uh, batter being hit by a batted ball. This is when Chris and I were putting this presentation together, we recognize that both of us actually handle that scenario in our pre games. And that's exactly why we do that. So that if it occurs on the diamond, we can say to a coach, no, no, my partners would have called that because we chatted about that before the game. When it comes to things that occur around the plate, they are the plate umpire's responsibility. And so with catcher's obstruction, and, and what I mean by this particular in example of catcher's obstruction, you have a batter in the box and they attempt a swing and does their bat hit the catcher's glove or not? Do we have a possible catcher's obstruction or not? When we were chatting about this scenario, I think it's tough for a crew to come together and have a, a conference and to come out of the conference with the catcher's obstruction. Um, I, I would suggest that the plate umpire is right there. It is um, oftentimes they might not see it, but you can hear the difference between the ball hitting a glove or the bat hitting a glove rather and the bat hitting a ball. Um, I think if you were in a emotionally charged game and you call catcher obstruction out of a conference, I would presume that you would have some coaches coming and saying, okay, which one of those partners helped you arrive at that decision? Because I would like to chat with them so that I could maybe go to the same optometrist that they have. Um, like 
it, it puts the crew in a precarious situation when we're coming out with a call out of a conference like that. So I would um, perhaps encourage you to think about that it would be better to have the call, even though it's delayed, rather than have a conference and then have that particular obstruction call. The second example that we have is you have a, a really close call and you get a lot of heat or a lot of grief from the call from the team that the call goes against and this is actually an instance where we see officials who are at their first provincial at their first regional where they're experiencing that type of that level of intensity and that level of emotional reaction maybe for the first time and we sometimes get um we buy into maybe i need to talk to my crew about that call no you don't this is a lose lose scenario because if you conference and you actually come out with a different call you're going to get just as much heat from the other team if not more and it, and it really puts your crew members in 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 a bit of hot water similarly if you come out of your conference and you're staying with your call the team that's already irritated with you is now irritated with the whole crew. So it's it's not helpful for the crew to conference over judgment calls when it just happens to be a close play. And the third example, there are, when we have an obstruction call, whether there's a single runner or there's multiple runners, it is, helpful to identify in the pregame how we are going to communicate as a crew about whether or not the calling official is comfortable with where the obstructed runner ends up when the play is finished. It is time that is unnecessary to use in a conference to determine or to make sure that all of the officials on the crew are on the same page with regard to where the umpire or where the runner is at the end of that play. And the last example that we have related to um, when not to conference is what what we have called the affirmation or appeasement confer conference. And what I mean by affirmation is you already know this is this is what what you have. You're just going to conference with your crew to affirm or to make sure that this is what you should do. If you already know and it's in your gut and you've already done something, stick with it. Just go with it. The appeasement conference is one that I think uh, we've certainly seen and observed in our officials who are going to their first provincial, first regional. You know, and, and, and you ask the official after the game, so why did you conference in that in that particular scenario? Well, the coach was so nice. They were just so respectful. And I just, you know, I, I thought I would, you know, be kind. <laughs> you know, that is really something that for those of you who haven't attended a provincial or for those of you who are on the horizon of going to your your first Western or Eastern or Canadian championship, really reflect upon whether or not that helps the credibility of the crew to appease a coach with a conference when you know going in that there's no way you're going to change your mind that you were there you had the right angle you were at the right distance and you're comfortable with that call there's no need to have a conversation with your crew so those are the examples that that we wanted to go over of when you should avoid conferencing So the next thing we're going to look at is how to avoid a conference. So there's four points that we wanted to come up with to give you examples on how you can avoid even having a conference in the first place. We've already talked and stressed the pregame, right? Having that conversation before we've even stepped on the diamond with our crew on how we're going to handle certain situations so that there's less confusion when it does occur in the game. Uh, focusing concentration, obviously, you know, from the very first pitch to the last pitch, we need to stay focused as officials and concentrate on uh, the plays and the action that we're seeing on the diamond. If we make sure that we are focused and concentrating 
and getting into proper positioning, having good timing, all that stuff like that, that leads us to good call accuracy. And when we have less, or if we have a high call accuracy as a crew, we'll have less conferences because there's less questioning by participants on whether or not you got the call right or wrong. Because we've gotten to the position that we need to be to see the call, we've had good timing to make sure that the ball is secure or it hasn't dropped on the ground, all these things that lead us to be able to make a good judgment of the situation and therefore have good call accuracy. And when we have good call accuracy, that leads to confidence as us as officials. Uh, you know, when you look confident with your mechanics, with your voice, with your signals, all those things lead to you showing a confident body language about the call that you just made. You present less doubt in the minds of those participants, in, in the minds of the spectators, about whether or not you were correct in your adjudication of the call. So it starts with that pregame, being focused and concentrating through, from start to finish, results in good call accuracy, which exudes confidence in your abilities and the abilities of the crew to the participants. Just before we go to the last slide, I just wanted to, um, this is really helpful information about how to avoid a conference, but we're not gonna be able to avoid conferences. So what I would really like to encourage you to do, when you do have to conference, be reflective about how effective it was. You know, um, after you've had that conversation with the coach, did they, were they pleasant? Did they, they might not have liked the outcome, but did they, did they go back to their bench? Um, these experiences and your reflection upon them is actually where a lot of learning occurs because you will have to conference. So think about after the game is over, have a conversation with your crew. Did that go well? Did the coach, you know, did he accept the information and go about his business? And if he didn't, I think that is, or he or she, sorry, if he or she did not go about their business, I think that is a prime opportunity for us to think about what could we have done differently? Should we have conference to begin with? Was the conference too long? Um, did we follow these steps? Did the right umpire initiate? Were they clear and concise? Um, you know, just some just some things to, to think about because I think when we take the time to reflect upon our own games and our own experiences, that's when really a lot of growth happens. So just to wrap things up here, um, Chris, this is a miracle. We're actually gonna be on time. Um, if you haven't noticed the theme of how important a pregame is, we're just going to reiterate it one more time. The pregame is critical. And we've talked about pregaming situations that may come up that may cause you to conference. Um, what I have here is what I call the two rules of engagement. And these are the two things that I talk about before games that actually talk about why we would conference to begin with. So I don't I don't know how many of you talk about conferencing in your pregame. Um, I've added that over the years because of things that have happened in games. So these are the two things that I talk about. If we are thinking about gathering the crew together, could we please have one or both of these things in existence? A that we think someone on the crew has some kind of additional information that, that we don't have. And two, that we have a willingness to change our mind. If one of those two things isn't present, then perhaps we should think twice before we gather the crew together. And this is actually something that I go over with my crews before the game even starts. And for, for those of you that are again, maybe on the horizon of going to your first Canadian championship or for people that are thinking about um, or have aspirations to officiate internationally, just think about the challenge of 
having a pregame conversation with someone that you don't share language with. And then parlay that into what happens when you are on the diamond and something happens and you have to get together. And those are things that, that you may want to think about um, because they certainly add an element of um, intrigue <laughs> to a conference when or should they occur. And just the, the last point, um, Chris and I are both multi-sport officials. And in sports like rugby and hockey, uh, football, basketball, there's so many players in such close quarters that the officials go into the games with almost like a heightened sense of alertness. And this phrase, expect the unexpected, is something that you hear frequently in those contact sports. I think that along with our mantra of pre-pitch preparation, I think those two things, if we incorporate those into our mindset and, and employ these tactics, I think we will be better able to incorporate some of the items that, that Chris and I have reviewed today. So thank, thank you, you very guys. much. Yes, uh, we just have a little comment here that if if any of these amazing people that are attending, of, of which um, Chris and I have no idea who is out there, but if anyone has any uh, ideas for us for future webinars, please reach out to us at education at asua.ca. We'd love to hear your thoughts. So thank you guys. That was really, really great. What a way to kick off uh, our first Blue Connections. Um, I was just looking through the attendee list and I see a lot of uh, familiar names from across the country and around the world. Um, so we've got a lot of international visitors tonight. So you guys are superstars around the, uh, I, I expect some of them are up in the middle of the night or <laughs> doing other things. <laughs> um, so uh, so it's been really great to start like this. It, uh, I, there, there are no questions in the, in the question box. If anybody has any questions for Frankie, or Chris, we do have uh, a, a couple of minutes that we could grab and uh, and to, uh, to pass those along. Um, but yeah, your talk about uh, pre-game and post-game and, and wrap-up is really um, apropos um, because we just planned uh, June uh, sessions and the first two are pre-game and post-game. Oh, cool. So I think that that'll be this will be a good lead into that. So uh, um, and uh, we've got some got some really cool stuff happening there. So there does not seem to be any questions for you, um, but I have one. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Chris, any sport? What was the toughest conference that you've ever had to deal with? Um, I think it was probably, uh, when I was working in the Western Hockey League as a linesman type thing, we had a situation where we, uh, had to come together, um, about a, a goal, no goal situation, uh, whether the puck had gone in or not. Uh, and this was pre video goal judge time. So, um, it was definitely, you know, again, something that we had to, you know, take a situation where a goal was awarded after the fact type thing. Um, so I guess that would have been the thing because obviously it was a very close team at that point and one team wasn't too happy obviously when a goal was scored because it was not a clear cut goal or no goal situation. Right. Frankie? Uh, I'll start with a weird one. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I would say, um, Actually, for the first time in my entire officiating career, I had two conferences on the same play, and I just found that really weird. So, yeah. um, and I and I've, I didn't deal with it in the presentation, but since you asked, I'll probably just add it in. It hopefully this will help other people. Um, we originally conferenced over um, the obstruction of a runner between third base and home. And I was at first base in this game. And then uh, we conferenced, you know, everything was good. And then we were just at our positions and we were called back because the coach was now asking if the runners were appropriately placed. And right. what they were meaning was, was time called at any time? And therefore the runners actually advanced 
over what they were eligible for. So here's another tip since we're on conferencing, don't have, don't conference twice on the same place. So make, <laughs> make sure that you get all the information done. Um, but I'd have to say the most difficult one, similar to Chris is, is not a softball one. It was a basketball situation where we had, um, three different things happen on the same play. Did a shot beat the, uh, score clock, like the, the shot clock. And then was there a uh, foul or out of bounds on the play? And then um, we also had a timeout request at the same time, but we didn't know um, the bench and the team had a different understanding of how many team timeouts were left for that team. And that was a that was a really long, convoluted, lots of stuff going on. Um, most difficult chat with my partners I've ever had. Excellent. Well, thank you so much um, for sharing your expertise and your time this evening. That completes episode one of Blue Connections 2020. A special thanks going out to Level 5 umpire Darren Jerwar for his work as co-producer for this series. Darren's been working really hard putting together a great lineup. Um, join us next week, because next week we are going to have uh, Trevor Topping from Ontario. Trevor's going to uh, take us on a little journey about starting and maintaining a focused fitness routine to help you prepare for when we do actually get back on the field. So next week, fitness safe at home with Trevor Topping. Thanks, Jeff. Hello. Thanks, Donna. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, Thank and just, um, just a reminder that all episodes of Blue Connections will um, 2020 will be available later on the Softball Canada Umpires YouTube channel. And we look forward seeing you all next Sunday and have a wonderful Sunday afternoon or evening evening it is evening here <laughs> okay